Hello everyone, Jamie Mendez, owner of Magical Me, spiritual intuitive and guide for the world as a collective. So I am here with our March totem messenger. And what that is, um, is every month I have decided to do something that I used to do uh, way back when I first started Magical Me. And that was to bring forth an animal messenger that has a message for the world as a collective. And this will be for the entirety of the month. So kind of like an outlook as to what we can expect going forward in the month of March or how we can best embrace the energy going forward. All right. So welcome, Nicole and Karen. Um, can you ladies do me a favor and just tell me if my screen appears crooked or um, sideways? I'm trying a little something new <laughs> today with my iPad. So I just want to make sure that I'm not, um, you know, looking okay to me, but I'm a little topsy-turvy to all of you. Welcome Jillian and Leah. Glad you ladies could make it. Thanks for being here today. Welcome Lakeisha. Good afternoon to you as well. So how can everybody see me? Do I seem sideways or am I right side up? Screen's fine? All right. Thank you so much, Karen. All right. So what totem messengers are is basically using the skills or the gifts that are naturally, um, you know, within us or inherent within us to connect with the energy of our animal friends that, um, you know, share this world with us. Because even to our ancient ancestors and to even some of the, um, the Native Americans that are still here today, they look to the animals um, for, for signs, for everything, that natural information. Because animals are naturally in tune and connected with source energy. So, you know, they're very empathic, they're very sensitive, and through their presence, through synchronicity, through them showing up over and over and over again, um, we can see that they may have messages for us. So many of us go, on, go throughout our lives if we do spiritual work and we connect with different angels or we connect with different gods or different goddesses, maybe different ascended masters. And when you do these things, maybe even different elementals, you know, fairies, unicorns, dragons, when you do this, it's not necessarily that those guides are with you for your entire life, but they're here to bring in some wisdom or some teaching to assist you in uh, overcoming whatever obstacles you may need, whatever lessons you might currently have, or whatever it is that most needs to be learned at this time. So once you learn those lessons and they've shared all that they can share, they then take a step back and allow a new um, guide to come in. Animals act the same way they are guides. Thank you, Lakeisha. So they are guides and they're here to assist us as just as much as we need to assist them and be mindful of them. So I thought that it was a great way to connect with the earthier yet spiritual roots at the same time and help everybody just kind of become more aware of the beautiful energies that are all around us every day, bringing us messages even if we don't realize it. So it could be through synchronicity. So let's say a lion is the messenger that's coming forward for you. If this message, you know, clearly <laughs> you're not going to see a lion walking down the street, right? So how are you going to get a lion's message? Through synchronicity. So this means maybe word of mouth, people talking and you hear the word lion. Maybe you keep seeing images of lions everywhere. Maybe movies pop up and they are lions within the movies. So this is how synchronicity works. And I always ask spirit when they're going to give me a message so that I know it's definitely for me to show me in threes or give me that confirmation in threes. So the messenger that popped its little head in for the month of March that came in more than three times and just because I needed constant confirmation. It's not a messenger that I've worked with often. Um, it's actually the first time that I've actually connected to this animal's energy and I was uh, pleasantly surprised at the little impact that they have to offer and it is the otter. So the otter is the animal messenger that is coming forward for us as a collective for the month of March just to kind of give us some insight into how to best go through that. All right, so before I get into the actual message, I'm just going to take some time to see everybody popping in. I'm not ignoring everybody. So hi, Lori and Naomi. Thanks for being here, ladies. Liz and Lynette, welcome. Did you miss anything else? Oh, thank you, Karen. Oh, Nicole, does it look smaller than usual? It's, I turned it sideways just because 
long story, not going to go into it. Um, but I didn't know how well it would work with live because when Facebook first came out with live, you had to actually have your screen upright. So, um, and they have all these cool filter options and stuff. So just trying something different. Thanks for sharing the info ladies though. I appreciate that. Okay. So why is the otter coming forward for all of us this March? What does it mean for us? So if you think about the otter, the first thing that you connect with otters are what? Water. They swim, they're often seen swimming, and they are predominantly surrounded by water. There are otters in the river and there are otters in the sea. So let's focus on water for one second because I'm really gonna break this down for everybody. So the element of water is the otter's connection to the divine feminine. The divine feminine principle or energy of source that exists within the universe and needs to also be in balance within our own selves. So the divine feminine energy reminds us of the um, importance to nurture ourself, to love ourself, to embrace our creative and fiery and passionate energy within us. It also reminds us to tap into our own intuitive abilities and our natural um, psychic like gifts. Um, it, and empathy as well and goes and goes right hand in hand with that so really paying attention to your surroundings and um, the energy of others and um, you know tuning in if you will the divine feminine also reminds us of the importance of playfulness and how the divine masculine is really that go-getter that action driven the kind of power put your feet forward um, work 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 energy the divine feminine is more of the laid back, the relaxed, the free spirit and the playfulness. So think about what we've been going through for the last two months. So January and February, February has been really potent transitional times for us where a lot of us were still purging and releasing all of those outdated things that no longer served us in our life. A lot of us kind of pushed a big part of that off um, and let go of it in about the end of 2016. But coming into 2017, we were still in a very transitional phase where we were no, we weren't able to really step forward and we were not able to, um, definitely not able to go backwards. So we were going through a big release and a death of the old, if you will. So because it's been so intense and it's gonna continue to be in intense, we're really moving through this whole new gateway and beautiful time. But that doesn't mean that we should forget to have fun. That doesn't mean that we should forget to be playful. And I'm going to go into that in a second and let you know what exactly it is that means. Welcome, Lala. Glad you made it, beautiful lady. Thank you for being here. I was just telling everybody that the totem messenger for the month of March is the otter. And the otter's connection to water is a reminder to all of us about the um, divine feminine connection that is absolutely needed in all of our lives in everything so that is our empathy so now we are going to start to increase our awareness and our intuition to everything around us so paying attention to our surroundings and what's no longer serving us I will tell you that I have a friend who um, would liken themselves to not being very in tune or um, you know, not picking up things right away when, when they could have. Um, and this friend uh, had an experience that they were able to discern immediately was not for them. They picked up on uh, a negative energy and they were able to release the situation right away or at least recognize and becoming a, become aware that that situation was no longer for them. So this is what I'm talking about. Your your empathy and your awareness or your intuition increasing and through the element of water and the otter's connection to water we can see that and this is going to become more heightened the more you tune into that and pay attention so really the importance of it is to discern truth to discern what is no longer working and the negative energies that may still try to come in and present themselves to you in new forms even though you released old patterns you may be being presented with new new patterns and new opportunities to turn away and discern before you even engage, if that makes sense to everybody. 
So then you have the um, connection to uh, the, you know, with the otter. The otter is very playful. And you heard me just talk about that a second ago, where the otter isn't, it, it kind of goes with the flow, especially when you think in terms of the water, in, you know, the otter in the river. The, the otter does not try to fight the current. The otter doesn't try to flow the opposite way. It just kind of goes downstream. It goes with the way that the current is going. And in the meantime, it's rolling about in the water and it's just really having fun. This is a potent message for all of us this March. It is time to just breathe. It's time to just release and relax and let all of that go. You've arrived. You've made it through that transitional period. While you might be a little scraped and bruised, you're here and all wounds will heal given time and given the ability to just play. When you play, you literally engage your divine feminine through your sacral chakra. So our sacral chakras are going to be really big for the month of March as well. And the otter really does remind me of the connection to your sacral chakra. And I'm going to get into that too. Um, but it's interesting that sacral chakra is also ruled by the element of water. So it's not a coincidence here, guys. Thank you, Naomi. I appreciate that, sweetie. Actually got them from the Celtic festival that we have here in um in uh, in my area. So Bethlehem, Pennsylvania has a Celtic festival uh, once a year. And every year I end up getting a new piece of Celtic jewelry to go along with my set. So this was one of the first pieces that I picked up. Thank you for that. But I'm sure that you can find something similar if you go online, like on Amazon or something else. Okay. Um, so yes, so the sacral chakra uh, really is a huge role here. This is where the divine feminine and the otter kind of meet up and connect here. Um, so the playfulness part is really just like I said, going with the flow, not getting too caught up and wrapped up in circumstances, money situation, let's say I'm not putting this, you know, I'm saying not saying this is going to happen. I'm giving you an example, but let's say the money situation kind of comes in and it's a little rocky and it's rough and Ordinarily, in the past, maybe you might melt down. Maybe you might start to freak yourself out with panic and worry and start wondering where the next, um, you know, where you're going to be able to make up the deficit. But you don't have to worry about that. This is the type, this, this is what I'm talking about. That's the example I'm using is don't worry about it. Yes, you might want to just take precautions with things if you can, but don't let it consume you. Just let go. Go with the flow and trust that everything is just going to work out how it needs to. Situations are going to break down because they have to in order for new situations or lessons to be learned. So it might teach you how to maybe manage your money a little better. It might teach you maybe where money is going that needs to kind of stop going in certain areas or how you can better budget or maybe let go of things financially that aren't working anymore. So there's always a method to the madness. So play and relax and just kind of taking stock of where we are right now is really the main theme for the month of March. And just going with that, let go of the stress, let go of the worry, have fun. And this brings me to your sacral chakra. <laughs> well, the sacral chakra isn't always about fun, but when you have what you can do, I should say, to bring in a healthy sacral chakra and ensure that it is, uh, you know, in a healthy functioning in a healthy state is by um, utilizing and engaging that energy and you can do this through movement through play through what it is that makes your soul fire blaze so what is it ask yourself now what pops into your mind when you think about my soul fire what do i love to do for me not for anybody else what do i love to do for me what do I love to do? I love to read Oracle. I love to tap into my intuitive abilities. But sometimes, and most of the time, that's for everyone else. Sometimes it's for me. I do it for me too. But sometimes it's for everybody else. So that isn't going to work here. So I'm going to tell you, what do I love to do that I probably, in my life, couldn't live without? Dancing. I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. Back in the day when my husband and I were first married, we actually, my husband is um, from uh, Puerto Rican descent. My husband taught me how to salsa dance. 
He taught me how to dance all different types of Spanish dancing, um, merengue, bachata, you name it. And we just would go out and have fun and dance. And we actually entered some competitions. And it just became something that we did. And we won these competitions. And we didn't do it to win the competition. We did it because it was just something that we loved, that we had in common. And dancing to me has always been, since I was little, like breathing. And I, I kind of got, you know, you get away from those things that you love. And we did. My husband's very busy. I'm very busy. We haven't gone dancing. You can hear my dog barking in the background, so I apologize about that. Um, he'll stop soon. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, I kind of got away from that. And I just, dancing and movement is a way to embrace your divine feminine number one. It is a way to kind of tap into this inner fire that you have within you within you, and this passion that you have within you. And it is also a way to engage your sacral chakra through any type of movement. So it doesn't have to just be dancing. This could be jogging, running. This could be um, yoga. This could be some type of exercise. But dancing is for me. So I actually started um, or just I just signed up to take a belly dancing class because I've always wanted to do it. I got away from it. And what better way to bring forth my creative fire than to utilize movement as well as passion because belly dancing is very sensual. It's very passionate and it's very beautiful. So I'm absolutely taking a belly dancing class and I really look forward to it. I think it's going to be um really a way that I can better connect with my feminine energy unlike I ever have before. So other ways that you could do this besides dancing are, I'm going to say this one because it's the pink elephant in the room, intimacy. Even if it's not with, um, <laughs> intimacy with the right partners is the very, is the, is the key role though here okay so you want to understand that you're sharing energy with other people you're sh it's an ex when you are intimate with another person it is an exchange of energy so you want to make sure that you're not taking on negative energy dark energy if you have a relationship with somebody that's just very casual um that's really not the kind of relationship and intimacy you want to be engaging in so this is the more healthy intimacy so the intimacy with two people who um appreciate one another maybe love one another, and just at least, above all, respect one another. So then you have a healthy exchange of energy. And when this happens, you are naturally awakening that passionate um, divine feminine being within you as well as within your partner, and you are engaging in your zest and your love for life, which is what the otter is all about, okay? So you're bringing in that fiery, that passionate energy. So being very sensual is actually part of the divine feminine. It's a big part of that. Um, you could do artistic things. So painting, creating with your hands. Um, it could be gardening. It could be, um, you know, anything that you're doing that is creative. It doesn't have to just be artistic but I'm sure it will end up being artistic whether you see it that way or not, okay? So this is the theme for the month of March. And it's interesting because March is also usually the month that we connect with Ostara, for those of you who celebrate the uh, pagan and ancient Gaelic festivals. So Ostara is a fertility festival, the time of spring and newness, but also Easter, which is the... Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It is the um, counterpart to Easter. They're all about the rabbits, which is a symbol of fertility, and the eggs, which is also another symbol of fertility and planting new seeds for new life and new growth. So spring coming in is a big part of all of this otter energy coming in here today and this divine feminine energy we want to connect with. Okay, so I just want to make sure I didn't leave anything out. I'm going to scroll through some comments. Tammy says, I love dancing. And Naomi says, my sister loves belly dancing. She loves her group of sisters she dances with. You just brought me. Good thing I read those comments. Um, well, I'm glad to hear that. Angie, welcome, sweetheart. Thanks for being here. Speaking of sisters, there comes mine. So um, you actually bring me to a good point that I would have forgotten had I not read your comment, Naomi. So thank you for that. 
engaging with a group of like-minded beings. So fellas, I'm not going to exclude you. You can embrace your divine feminine just as well, just by being creative, by doing be by being more compassionate, by being more nurturing and maybe even doing things with other people who share the same um, likes and the same hobbies and so this is not just about kicking it with your buddies although you can you can do that but this is also about engaging your sacral chakras okay so you want to just you know not the, the testosterone driven things you want to do things that are much more creative and inspiring and, and passionate so getting together with a group of like-minded individuals and ladies this is you absolutely connecting with your sisters connecting with that circle of kindred souls that the, all of you bring out that empowering, creative um, goddess within each other. So absolutely you're going to want to, all of these things are going to be super important. And do you see the theme in all of them other than the divine feminine? The theme in all of them is play, is really about connecting with you at your core, at your soul. So this is about you this month. This is about rebirthing and not caring about the past and going forward, dancing through the month and dancing through life, really being the passionate, creative being that you are. And this is also a way to connect with the true authentic part of you, all right? So if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to comment with them and I hope that you enjoyed the otter message for the month by all means look more into working with the otter energy this month um be very flowy put out your you know your empathy and your feely sensors there that we have our little antennae that connects you to um becoming more aware and just starting to listen to discern truth and what resonates with your soul and what doesn't resonate with your soul Connecting with, um, you know, the energy around you to discern whether or not something is for you and whether it's not for you. The otter absolutely does that. The otter is very intuitive and it, you know, just by being surrounded by the element of water, it can't help not to. Um, so the otter does know when its surroundings are, you know, a little less than um, good for itself and when, you know, the energy is a little bit more murkier. So it knows to just kind of go with the flow of things and not fight the current also. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in with me for the March Totem Animal Messenger. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm going to continue to be doing this every first of the month. That's my intention. It could sometimes be around the first. Um, but yes, every first of the month, I will bring forth a new totem messenger to work with us all and that you can connect with going forward for that month. All right. Love and magical blessings to everybody. Thanks again for being here. And I will see you on Fortune Friday this week. Bye-bye.